So, um, welcome to the track two, first talk of track two. Anyone who's joining, feel free to introduce yourselves in the chat. We'll be getting started very shortly, and I will hand over to, to John to lead the session. Sadly, Ian hasn't been able to join us due to illness, but uh, John is back from, from his illness. He's recovered, so we've managed to uh, pick up at least <clears throat> one one of our two, and thankfully both here in uh, pre-recorded fashion. <laughs> so, John, we've uh, got a few people coming now. So, do you want to just start with introducing what you're going to talk about today, and and then um, give me a nod when you want me to hit the the link running? Yeah, no problems. Um, so we do in the pre-recorded session we do introduce the topic and uh, both myself and Ian uh, as to uh, what we are uh, who we are even uh, we both work for software solved here in Exeter I'm uh, director of technology and, uh, and and Ian is director of operations um, we're going to be talking about data ops as a process for improving your access to data fundamentally. So coming back to that theme about access, our talk is about easing access to data and making it easier to uh, gain those insights, get access to all the data you already have. Um, so that's the summary. I think um, probably best if we just go ahead and, and, and play the video. Thanks so much, John, and our absent friend, Ian. Uh, huge amount covered there, and as I can see, there's already some questions coming into the Q&A, so I'll leave it to you to uh, go through those questions. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Thank you. <clears throat> so, uh, Laurent Brick Brickle asks, um, have you seen any benefits of using end-to-end -end data ops pipelines, such as what's on offer from uh, GCP? and the capability of customer self-service with that type of pipeline? Or is it more hassle than it's worth, uh, e.g. Um, lack of client understanding on data regardless? So I'm a massive fan of customer self-service uh, when it comes to data processing and, and, and gaining insight and that sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> as Ian mentioned just at the end of the, the, the talk, it's something we're looking into in terms of um, enhancements to what we're doing at the moment. So we're not at that stage as uh, as yet. With the, the likes of Power BI, there is some self-service uh, capability, but it's usually around once you've already sort of modeled the data and, and structured it into a useful form for reporting. Um, so the idea of expanding that self-service capability to bring in, to allow end users to, to bring in their own data is something I'm really interested in. It's just not something uh, we've got to a, a useful point at this stage. Um, lack of client understanding on data regardless. I mean, very much depends on the end user you've got to respect their own expertise in their business area. So um, yes, a lot of our clients don't understand relational concepts, but they understand how their business works. They understand what data is, is driving that business. So it, there are educational exercises that need to be done to really sort of empower those end users. Um, Moving on, the next question from Barnaby Salter. Are you doing anything with event streaming, such as working with as your event hub? Yep, uh, we've got event hub running in a couple of systems. And I think um, in terms of event streaming, you can apply the data ops process and principles to that side of things. Um, the underlying where the data is coming from and how you're bringing it in you've got flexibility on the type of um, uh, data sources that you can work on. You can still apply those um, data ops principles and process to all of that. Um, so we would, we do the same approach as we would with sort of traditional 
relational data stores and bringing that into a data processing scenario. Um, doing aggregations, yeah. So any other questions? So I, I've got one, John, if that's... So um, I work uh, as CEO for a, a small health tech company where we're really a data analytics company. And so I'm interested in, in how would you start to sort of build the right skills in a team and the right, bring in the right roles to sort of build a data ops team on a small scale in a small... small yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, and it was when I was watching the uh, our own talk it was like we didn't really talk about where to start and I think um, looking at the technologies you're already using for your data processing and how those can be used to um, well what skills you need to to manage those sandboxes and manage the orchestration side of your data processing because it, it's 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 easy when you've got sort of data scientists in, pl in place or business analysts in place to just go and do that those data ex exercises or experiments and produce some result and it be a one off process but to move sorry i muted myself there <laughs> um to move in the direction of data ops much like um a lot of development organizations are done with DevOps, it's about looking at automating those processes and how, how um, you can orchestrate different environments for doing different um, experiments and the, the, the testing process and bringing that all together to sort of speed up the delivery of, of your data processing. Um, so, yeah, I'd certainly, there's definite crossover with DevOps in terms of that um, environment management side of things. And so that's certainly where I'd be looking to get extra skills in, if that's not something you have in-house. Um, and it's about planning for that journey. Great, that's really useful. What about for, I mean, we're talking about access at the conference today. Um, what about sort of young people who are thinking of a career down the sort of data ops stream? What, what are the kind of skills and maybe courses or, or things they might want to start picking up and learning about to get into that sort of area? Mm, interesting. Um, I'd certainly say as, as a foundation, some of those uh, data science skills are, are sort of fundamental to that whole process um, because without those, you've got nothing to automate. You've got nothing to um, uh, build into that that structure. But I think, again, it comes back to the DevOps skills and that understanding of infrastructure as well as the, the um, data analyst side and, and how finding the right technologies to bring that together. Great. Okay. Any more questions from from our audience or, or comments that you want to put through? Okay. Well, uh, thank you so much, John. Glad you're feeling better. Give our best to Ian. Um, I hope he's feeling better soon. Um, if anyone wants to rewatch any of the talk or share it with people, um, it is available and the Q&A recording will be available later as well. So now it's time for a break. Go and back to the networking session, meet some new people. And then we've got great talk coming up from Rich Lawrence from the Met Office, uh, next in track two on how to buy a really big computer so where you can crunch all that data and do that data ops pipeline really efficiently. Um, but yeah, so we hope to see you back in track two uh, in Rich's session at 12.15. Thanks.